Hi, I'm Stu Smith, and welcome to the PFT Bible video. This is the video portion of the PFT Bible book video combo. And the reason why I call this the PFT Bible is it is the authoritative manual for the most common physical fitness test, or PFT, for military and law enforcement. This PFT is used as an assessment tool for entrance into three quarters of the military and more than half of the law enforcement agencies in the United States. The PFT Bible is designed to help you create a strategy to pass your interview process or your biannual PFT. If you're watching this video, obviously you are seeking a higher calling out of your career by serving your country in the military, in local, state, federal law enforcement agencies. I thank you for this and I hope you reach your goals. Today, we're going to focus on the fitness test you'll be required to take prior to your acceptance into nearly all of our military branches, as well as our nation's law enforcement academies. This is a highly competitive process. You'll want to score your maximum because you're training to serve your country, and you'll be expected to perform your best from day one. I'm not even going to discuss the minimum standards. In my book, the minimum standards do not apply to a profession where your fitness level could mean the difference between life and death for you or your team. Your goal to serve your country is awesome, but the best and most efficient way to surpass your goal is to have a strategy. I'm here to teach you the strategy. This is not just the strategy to pass a test, however. It is a strategy to perform at your maximum throughout your career and your life. Our winning strategy comes in three parts, preparation, motivation, and perspiration. All right, let's talk preparation strategy. This one's an easy one. You've been preparing to serve your country your entire life. You're probably more inspired to serve today than any other time in your life. Maybe. You've excelled in academics or athletics or community service or taken on leadership roles. Maybe you've excelled in them all. Soon, you'll be tested to see if you're good enough in all these areas. Today, I'm going to help you prepare for the indoctrination where your fitness and abilities will be assessed. Here's what you have to do to prepare. I'm assuming you have 6 to 12 months from day one at boot camp or police academy. I'm also assuming that you're in general good health and highly active person. The workout plan in our PFT Bible is your preparation guide. Do it, because it works. Now, what I mean by this is that it requires practice, time, and effort. You know, get a buddy to help you by, maybe he's holding the stopwatch for you while you're running. Or he's going to yell at you for doing push-ups incorrectly. Uh, someone who's going to hold your feet for you while you're doing your sit-ups. This way, you'll get some feedback that will prepare you for the feedback you will constantly receive during your training. Alright, now we're going to talk pre-test preparation. First of all, pre-testing for this fitness test takes all week. Uh, you got to have fuel to take this test. That means the night before, the week before, you have to be properly hydrating, meaning drinking plenty of water. You have to be eating good foods, good complex carbohydrates, healthy proteins, and probably the most important is sleeping. If you can get seven to eight hours of sleep throughout this week, you'll be well rested and recovered to really ace this test. Now, the pre-test eating plan. I like to eat and drink foods with good carbohydrates in them for immediate energy. Things that I've seen success with is apples, baby carrots. Uh, personally work for me with uh, fitness tests, but you need to try them out for yourself because I don't want you to go to test day and try out something that works for me on your test day and it won't work for you. Find something that works in your stomach and can make you have optimal levels of energy for this test. Now, here's how the test works. When you show up for the test, I want you to warm up. 
Don't just jump into the first exercise cold and expect to perform well. You need to warm up for this test, meaning you're going to do push-ups and sit-ups first, so once you warm up your torso, go for a quick jog, stretch it out a little bit, do some dynamic stretches. All of these are in the book. You're also going to want to warm up your legs and your lower back because you're going to have to do a sit and reach, which is a toe touch, and you're going to have to run a mile and a half run. So, warming up just means getting the blood flowing and you're ready to roll. Okay, you're arriving at the test. Here's a little checklist you need to do. First of all, have you slept well? Second, are you hydrated? And third, are you um, well fed with good carbs? If yes to all those, then you're ready to roll. Let's do it. Now, this is the maximum PFT. As you can see, this quick little chart, and I'm going to break each one of these events down for you later in the video. Each one of these exercises is what you're going to be doing. Push-ups, sit-ups, sit and reach, mile and a half. All of these should be done at maximum effort, and that requires motivation and practice. Okay, before we break down the PFT, let's talk a little bit about motivation. Here's my thing on motivation. It's not my job to motivate you to serve your country. In fact, if you need me to motivate you to serve your country, you're probably on the wrong career path. This is not a game, and you really have to want to do this. In my mind, that's all you need. If this is what you want, you make the time to prepare your body and mind to succeed. Even if you have to work full time, you still need to exercise. We talked about preparation. You've prepared your whole life for this. Now it's time to take it to the next level. And here's why. Because life is a competition. From here on in, you will be competing for everything. Thousands of people apply for these coveted slots each year. And you will never succeed in this profession if you survive with the minimums. The person next to you is always going for the max. And they will always give one more. You're going to have to work long hours at this. When you're tired, and you're going to get tired. And when you're discouraged, and you'll get discouraged, I want you to repeat the following. Live to compete, not just survive. This is what I call a performance cue, and it's the tool that got me through the Naval Academy and SEAL training, and it's what I use today with candidates I train, and myself. Alright, last part of the strategy, perspiration strategy. First off, military and police men and women don't perspire, they sweat. Second. Sweating is just a result of your preparation and motivation. It's up to you. It's really always been up to you. But now it's for real. So let's do this. All right, let's talk about the maximum PFT strategy. If you notice, this is the chart I showed you earlier before. Now we're going to break down each one of these events. But for right now, let me just show you the strategy that you need to utilize while you take this test. Push-ups, I'm going to show you how to do push-ups here in a second. And depending on your branch of service or the agency that you're applying for in the police department, it's either going to be one or two minute test. You have to find out that information on how long you need to be able to do push-ups for. The next exercise is sit-ups. Now, in between the push-ups and sit-ups, what I want you to do is stretch out your stomach. Prepare your stomach muscles for the sit-ups. Right? You usually have about two minutes in between these exercises. After the sit-ups, you're going to have the sit and reach. You definitely want to take a quick second to stretch out your hamstrings and your lower back and just test yourself out on the uh, pass-fail test of the sit and reach. Basically, you just bend over and touch your toes while you're sitting on your rump. Uh, next test, this one usually have about ten minutes in between, and this is where you're going to take that 1.5 mile run and prepare for that by getting all the blood out of your upper body and getting it down to your legs. And I'm going to explain that further. 
But the big thing here is maximum effort. You gotta go with maximum effort on this test because your life, your buddy's life, depends on your fitness level. All right, let's break down the first event, maximum push-ups. Great exercise. Everybody uses the push-up as an assessment tool to get into these military law enforcement um, programs. It's the most commonly used exercise, oldest exercise, developed by the Greeks thousands of years ago. The key to this one is proper hand placement, right? And I'm going to show you on the video exactly where that placement is. But what you want to think about when you're doing push-ups is utilizing three muscle groups. That's your chest muscles, shoulder muscles, and your triceps. By properly placing your hands, you can distribute your body weight between those three muscle groups. Now, all the way down means all the way down. Touch your chest to either a fist that someone's going to be, your counter is going to be uh, uh, holding under your chest for you, or touch all the way to the ground. Depending on your fitness test, you have one of those two um, restraints on how you're tested. Uh, up and down movement, you want to straighten up. There's no gray area in this one. Your arm has to be straight when you're in the up position. And this is a fast movement, gravity aided, right? So going down shouldn't be a waste of energy. Just let gravity take you down. Don't waste your energy going down too slow. And really, you're only going to exert on the up in the up movement. So relax on the down, exert on the up. Now, keep your back straight, your head up and you'll be able to rock this test. Let's check out the video, because the picture's worth a thousand words. Okay, here I am, getting ready, working on my hand placement. My hand placement needs to be right there by the chest, like you're doing a bench press, not up by your head. So a little bit greater than shoulder width apart, and you come down. Take a look at your hands, to the left, to the right, and notice that it's down there low. If, it's, if you're looking to the left and right, and your hands are too high, if you're seeing them up here, not good. Drop them down to here. And now, let's go all the way up, all the way down. And notice I'm going about where a fist would be right now. I'm not going all the way down. But notice the elbows are locked out in the up position. My back straight, my head is up. Let me slow it down for you a little bit. Same thing, back straight, head up, all the way down, all the way up. All the way down, all the way up. Don't touch your knees to the floor. As soon as you touch your knees to the floor, test is over. Okay, next exercise, maximum sit-ups. This is a pacing exercise. A little bit different from the push-ups because you were just trying to sprint it out, get as many as you can before gravity started taking away your reps. Pacing exercises mean that for a 15 second interval, depending on your goal, you're going to want a certain number of sit-ups. So let's say your goal in one minute is 60, right? Or in two minutes it's 120, which is a pace of one per second. Your 15 second intervals should be 15 sit-ups in 15 seconds. Now, that's a pretty high goal. That's, that's a big maximum. You don't necessarily have to get that number, but I recommend it. Um, this test is, like I said, either a one or two minute test, and your hands are going to be in one or two positions. It's either going to be crossed in front of your chest, or it's going to be fingers locked behind your head, and I'll show you both ways. You need to practice one or the other because the unit that you're testing for will have either hands over front of them or hands behind their head. Now, the down position, real easy. Your shoulders are laying on the floor. You have to go to that position every time. The up position, your knees um, have to be about 45 degree angle and you should be touching, coming close to elbows touching your knees. Um, rest in the up position, don't rest in the down. And let's take a look at the video. Picture's worth a thousand words. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the hands behind the head, fingers interlocked. The Army likes to use it this way and many police departments do as well. Good, you got a bend in the knee there, feet flat on the floor, someone's going to be holding your feet during the test. And what you're going to want to do is pull your elbows towards your knees, all the way up, all the way down. 
And this is a pacing exercise. So learn your pace. If your goal is 80 in two minutes, that means you have to be at 40 in one minute or 20 in 30 seconds. So learn your pace. Don't sprint this exercise and get too many too fast. All right, so let's try it this way. Navy likes to do it with the, uh, called the crunch with the hands in front of their chest. And they're basically their elbows just touch the thighs. Same movement, really. Personally, I think the ones behind the head are just a little bit harder. So if you have to do those, make sure you practice them that way. Because it may take a few off of your, your maximum effort whenever you take your test. All right, now we're going to talk about the next event, which is a really easy one. It's called the sit and reach. And by now, if you've worked using the PFT Bible for six, maybe 12 weeks, you should already be able to touch your toes because the daily stretch routines in the book will show you how to do that. And it just takes practice. So if you're sitting on your rump and you can't touch your toes, it means you need to practice trying to touch your toes. And there's a variety of exercises that you can do and they're all in there. From your lower back, your hips, and your hamstrings, they all need to be flexible. And this will help you prevent injury as well. So touch your toes, real easy. Let's hit the mile and a half ready to run. All right, last event. The 1.5 mile maximum run. Now that means maximum speed, not maximum time. You really want to get a fast time on this because it will just help you with your running when you're in indoctrination programs, boot camp, or service academy. All right, so now let's uh, talk about the transition to running. Now, the transition to running, I'm going to show you on the video what I mean by that. But basically what you're trying to do is you're going to do a little warm-up jog. And what this will do is get the blood down in your legs from trapped up in your chest and shoulders and your abdominal area lower back. Um, after doing maximum effort tests, blood just pools up here and it makes it a little bit difficult if you start to run right after that um, to get the blood down to your legs. You'll, it'll change everything. Your heart rate will be increased, your breathing rhythm will be off. You just won't feel very good until maybe the end of the first or the second lap. So if you've ever done a test and then you say, you know, I just didn't feel good till like the second lap. This is the reason why. So get the blood down to your legs and you will be at optimal performance. So what I do for this is I stretch the upper body first, then the lower body, and now I'm prepared to run. And I find a running pace. So if I want to run a nine minute mile and a half, my quarter mile is going to be in 90 seconds. You know, you figure out your pace and what, divide that by six, and that's what each one of your quarter miles should be. All right, so let's see it on video. All right, as you can see here, I just got through doing the push-ups and the sit-ups. I'm loosening up my shoulders and chest, pretty tight after maxing out on the push-ups. My shoulders are tight, my chest is tight, so I gotta loosen that up, get the blood flowing. My abs are a little tight, so stretch the abs, lower back, Shake out the arms. See, I'm loosening the legs. I'm just doing a little dynamic stretching there with uh, what's called butt kickers. Just taking my heels up as high as I can to my rump. Just loosening up. And you can run, uh, you know, 200 yards, 400 yards, and just shake it out. It's going to look a little bit silly, but shake out your arms. Stretch out your legs. Like I said, I spend usually about five minutes just loosening up my upper body getting the blood down to my legs before I take this test, before I actually stretch the legs to take the test. So, as you can see here, just kind of stretching out. Guy who's starting the clock is telling me we got a minute and just getting ready to go. Still got another few more seconds, so while I have a few more seconds, take a little time to stretch. Notice I don't have to be in a three-point stance or a four-point stance here. You're looking for six good pace lap. So every time you get a second, take a second to stretch. And focus on your pace. Focus on your pace. Your pace and time. There you go. Nice easy pace. This isn't a sprint. Do not sprint doing this first lap. Otherwise it will ruin your next five laps. This is a quarter mile track. You got to do six laps. Notice I'm breathing. Big inhales, 
big exhales. That's the key. What I like to do is take three steps inhale, three step exhale. Notice the arm swing, full arm swings, good strides, not landing on my heels, but kind of landing at the balls of my feet and rolling across my feet. Nice, steady pace. You can keep this pace up for a long time, but it takes practice. Nice, steady pace. Slow it down for you a little bit. Notice the arm swing. Take three steps inhale, three steps exhale. Get in the rhythm. Nice, steady rhythm. Running straight up. Lean forward just a little bit. Relax those hands. Notice my hands are nice and relaxed. I'm not clenching my fists. I'm not gritting my teeth. This isn't a painful event. Just nice, easy, relaxed, but learn your pace. Build up some endurance so you can max that pace. All right, so here's the final lap of this run. Coming in for the uh, run through the tape. Big effort. Look at your watch. See where you were. All right, now at this moment, you should feel tired. In fact, some people say, if you're not puking, you're not trying. I'm not puking on this one, so maybe I didn't try hard enough, but still. You should be pretty winded right now where you don't feel like talking. Now, if you feel like talking and you're able to talk, you didn't try hard enough. All right. Now, explain to you the preparation, motivation, and technique strategy of the PFT. You've seen the video. Watch it again and again. Now it's up to you to apply it. This is your PFT Bible. So, get up, get out in all kinds of weather, day and night, work out hard. One thing that I've always found is this. If you go to training, lead by example. Remember, going for the maximum protects you and your team. Expect more from yourself than the instructors do, and always give one more. Always liked it whenever uh, someone was given 20, someone else would give 21. I want you to run one more lap, do one more push-up, one more pull-up, one more sit-up. When I was at the Naval Academy, we always did one more to beat Army. So find out what you want to do one more for and do it. Good luck. Smith out.